125 amps. You can see I've got my filler wire pretty much in between that gap. I've got enough gap to where I can fit the wire in between and I'm moving my torch back and forth making sure I'm melting off the edges. I've got this one tacked in three places. I've got my tacks feathered where I'm going to be tying in or welding up to my tack. I don't have it feathered where I'm going to leave. I'm running enough amperage to where I can get a good tie in leaving my tack. Here you can see how much space I have left. Again, I'm running an eighth inch fill wire, so I've got a little bit of space. I want to make sure I have plenty of room to fit the wire down to the bottom. I'm going to be back feeding the bottoms, and I'm going to be doing a lay wire on the top quarters. When I first get it struck, I'm going side to side with my fill and my torch, trying to get the two pipes joined together since I don't have a tack on the bottom side. I'm doing the same motion with the torch as what I was doing for the tack welds in the opening arc shot. You can see I'm just kind of wiggling the torch back and forth with my fingers. I'm not really moving anything more but just my fingers. And I'm trying to do the best I can to keep that wire joined into the weld puddle the whole time. Like you can tell when, when I lose it, the arc gets pretty bright. That's not a big deal. You just want to make sure you get that wire back in the puddle as fast as you can. If you have that wire outside the puddle for too long, you'll start generating too much heat and you'll start getting sucked back. You'll get a really shallow root pass. There's a couple of times in here, like right now, you see I just got my filler metal stuck. It's not a big deal. You just don't freak out. Just bring the torch over to where the filler metal is and try to melt that section of pipe and it'll usually break that filler metal loose. See there, I got pretty uncomfortable, so I decided to just quit. Bring the filler metal out to the outside of the pipe, strike back up, and I'm starting to do a lay wire. I've got the filler metal on the outside of the pipe now. When you're going into your tie-ins, make sure you take plenty of time, get it nice and hot so you get a smooth tie-in. On this root pass, I'm running 125 amps all the way around. Sometimes I run a little bit hotter on the top side, but this one seemed to be pretty squared away. I could run 125 for all four sides. Here's a good shot from the inside. I take my time getting started, making sure I melt off that previous section of root. And if you look closely, you can see the numbers and the letters on the filler metal. So you get a good idea how much wire I'm actually feeding into the puddle. So you can see I'm actually feeding quite a bit of wire down into that puddle. I'm running rather hot, but this thick of pipe, it can take the heat. So I'm still good. And again, my torch is going side to side, but I'm trying to keep that filler metal right there in the center where the, the root opening is. Up here, I'm starting to get vertical, starting to get into a bad position again. When I'm a little more comfortable this time, I don't have to stop welding. I just bring my torch back about a half inch, bring my fill to the outside of the pipe, do a lay wire from there. 
nice and slow to the tie-in, keyhole it before I go into it. And when I get to my top quarters, I don't have to back feed anymore. Gravity is going to be get reinforcement on the inside. Here I've got the wire floating in between the root opening, a little less than an eighth inch gap. So my wire is on the top side of my bevels and I'm putting a little bit of pressure on the fill. And you can see I'm doing kind of an oval motion with my torch and put a little bit of pressure on my fill. When I move the torch forward, I want to be able to push a little bit of fill into the poodle. Again, I'm not just walking over the fill, I'm pushing a little bit in, making sure that I have good reinforcement on the inside. Now, I don't know if you caught that, but my hand slipped quite a bit. That's one reason why I like to freehand my root passes. No matter what position it's in, I always like to freehand. Because if I was walking the cup, I might not have been able to save that. I might have just had to stop welding. For reference, I'm running an 8th inch, 2% thoriated tungsten and a number 10 cup. Running a Tech Torch Rocker TIG Torch with ER70S6 filler metal. Let's have a look. You can see on that left side where I got uncomfortable and had to stop, I got a little bit of a dingleberry right there. It's not over an eighth of an inch, so it's good. The rest of it, 330 seconds reinforcement, good smooth tie-ins. All the edges are broken down. Everything looks nice and smooth. That's what we're looking for. Maybe in a later video I'll show you how to fix that bad spot on the left side because that can be fixed as long as you know where it's at and you do it before you put your fill pass in. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for part two the fill passes.